So if you're anything like me, at one point or another, you've struggled or continue to struggle with the concept of collision layer versus collision masks. I've been working on this prototype and I'm using them in a couple of different places. So I thought it might be a good opportunity to walk you through how I'm using them and maybe help you develop a mental model to keep them straight in your head. Let's start by differentiating the two. They look very similar, but they behave differently. A collision layer defines where a physics object resides. It's where it can be found. An object's collision mask, on the other hand, defines where it will look for collisions with other physics objects. In order for an object to participate in collisions, it must reside on at least one layer. And in order to detect collisions with other objects, it must look to at least one mask. Objects might reside on multiple layers and look to multiple masks, but in its simplest form, any object participating in some form of collision will either reside on one layer or look to one mask. And sure, we can talk about the theory until our eyes go crossed, or we could just look at some examples. So let's pull up the prototype I'm working on. I'll start by showing you what the final product will look like, and then I'm going to remove all of the collision logic, and we'll build that together so you can see how we get there. So I've got this little earthbound character who walks around. You can see he collides with our tile map. There are objects with which he can interact. So I can hit the action button and get some text. You'll notice I've got a stamina bar in the upper left that's draining, but when I'm down in this little garden area, it doesn't drain. And lastly, if you look closely at these rocks, you'll notice this one looks a little different. And oh, look at that. We can push it aside and there's a secret. Now I'm going to pause the video and remove all my layers and masks, and then we'll put them back together so you can see the logic behind all of that. Now that I've got all my layer and masks cleared, I'm going to go up to debug and select visible collision shapes. And this is going to allow us to see those objects while we're testing the game. And you'll see, I've got this raycaster and my collider, but I'm clipping right through everything. My interactions don't work. My meter is still draining while I'm in this garden area and I'm not able to push this rock. That's exactly what we want. The first thing we're gonna do is set up our layer names and this isn't a required step, but you'll find that it makes it a lot easier when choosing the logic for each of your physics objects. So we'll go up to Project, Project Settings, and then scroll all the way down to 2D Physics. If you're making a 3D game, you'll use 3D Physics. So I've got an environment layer. This is largely where static things will go, like walls or immovable NPCs. I got one for the player. I've got one for interactions and one for props. Props is where I put things that are kind of like the environment, but might move. So they're going to collide with the environment, but I like to keep them on a separate layer. Let's start by setting up our player so that he can collide with the environment. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is add the player to the player layer. And you'll see as I mouse over these layers, I'm going to get the name of each layer that I set. I can also click on these three dots and it's going to give me a list of all of the layers that I've defined. So because this is the player, I want it to be on the player layer, which again is defining where the player resides. It's where other objects will look if they want to scan for collisions with the player. The player, however, I want to look for collisions with the environment and props. In this case, this rock down here that we can push is a prop. So now you might expect if I run around, I'm going to collide with the environment. The player is looking to the environment layer, but we haven't placed anything on the environment layer. So let's do that. Let's start with our tile map. And over here, we're going to set our collision layer to environment. And if I come down into our tile set, you can see where I've defined collidable tiles. If I click on any one of them and come over here to the physics layer, you'll see here's the collision shape you'll see it belongs to physics layer zero, which is the first in this physics layers array. Tiles can certainly exist on multiple layers and tile sets can have multiple physics layers defined. If I were to click this add element, I would get a new set of collision layers and you'll see down here, I get a second physics layer. We're not gonna go that deep in this video, just be aware that that's an option. 
So you'll see now that if we run the game, I am colliding with the items from the tile map, but I'm not going to collide with this sign because that's a prop. And I'm not going to collide with this rock, but everything else that's coming from the tile map is working. So let's fix our props. To fix that, I'm going to open the sign. I'm going to select the root node, which is a static body 2D, and I'm going to add it to our props layer. Save that. I'm going to open our block and I'm going to do the same thing. This one's a rigid body 2D, but it's also going to go on the props layer. Now, if we test the game, you'll see the player is colliding with the sign because the player is set to look for the props layer. And it does collide and allow me to push that rock because it's looking at the props layer there as well. But my stamina is draining in the park, which we don't want. And when I press the action button here, I'm not getting my sign text. So let's fix that one next. Inside of my sign, I have an Airy 2D that I'm using for interactions, which is why we have our interaction layer. So let's assign this to the interactions layer, which is half of the battle. And then on our hero, we have this forward ray scene, which is just responsible for drawing this ray caster in the direction that we're facing. And its only job is to look for possible objects to interact with. So we'll want our ray caster 2D to look towards the interactions layer. We don't want it to look for anything else. It's just looking for those area 2Ds where an interaction might exist. And you might notice that this Raycast 2D only defines a collision mask. That's because Raycast 2Ds only look for interactions. They cannot be detected. This can be a helpful way to remember how layers and masks differ. Because a Raycast 2D only detects, it cannot be detected. It only has a collision mask. It cannot exist in a layer because nothing can look for a ray. If you understand how the Raycast 2D works and you keep that in mind, it'll help you remember the difference between collision layers and collision masks. So now that we've told the Raycast where to look to find interactions and we've added our interaction to the appropriate layer, if we head over to that sign, you'll notice our Raycast is now turning red, telling us that it's actually detecting this area 2D. So now that I'm within range of this interactable object and my Raycast is set to notice that area 2D, when I hit the spacebar, it fires the interaction code that the sign defines. But as I mentioned earlier, this area 2D, which the Raycast isn't detecting, which is what we want, it's not giving us our stamina bonus. So let's fix that. Now that we're back in our scene, let's set up the area that keeps us from losing stamina. We've got an area 2D, and this one actually doesn't need to live on a layer because nothing's going to look for it. It's only going to look for the player. If it detects the player entering the zone, it's going to set a flag on the player that basically says, don't drain stamina. And when the player leaves that zone, it's going to uncheck that flag and stamina will drain again. So this one only needs to look for the player. So under the mask, I'm going to select the player mask and that's all we need to do. So now when I run it, you'll see we're losing stamina. And as soon as we enter this zone, we stop losing it. And when I leave it, it starts draining again. I'm not going to get into the specifics of how I'm setting up interactions and these area 2Ds. Uh, if you're interested in that part of the code, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll do a separate video on how to handle coding and detecting interactions. Uh, I'll give you a quick look here since this one's very basic. The area 2D defines on body entered and on body exit. So when it detects something entering it, it checks for whether it's a hero. And if it is, it sets this in free travel boolean as true and it does the inverse when the player leaves. And this is why it doesn't need to exist on a layer. It only needs to look out for the player and do something if it finds a player. Everything else it's either going to ignore because it's not looking to the layers that those things exist on, or if for some reason something ended up here that wasn't a hero, it would only execute that code on the hero because of this line. But like I said, if you're interested in seeing how I'm setting up interactions and other game specific stuff outside of just colliding with things, uh, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll throw a video together.
So one quick final example, I have this rigid body 2D crate. It's not on any layers and it's not looking to any masks right now. If I set it on the environment layer, even though a rigid body 2D can be moved by physics, you can give it impulses. If I set it up on a layer that the player is looking to, the player will collide with it, but it's not receiving any of the forces from the player. Whereas if instead of putting it on this layer, I have it look to the player layer, you'll see that when I collide with it, it actually goes spinning off because it's now, now it's actually looking for the information from that collision and it's reacting appropriately. If I wanted that crate to also collide with the environment, I can check this mask, the environment mask. And now when I collide with it, it'll spin off, but it'll also run into these walls here. That's a deeper rabbit hole than I wanted to get into, but I wanted to make you aware of that distinction. It's okay if you're unsure whether something needs to belong to a layer or look to a mask. It's fairly trivial to try a couple of permutations so that you get the results that you're looking for. I would guess that 90% of your layer and mask setups are going to fall well within what we discussed at the top, which is if I want object A to collide with object B, object A needs to look to the layer that object B is on through the mask. As I say it, it still sounds confusing. Just think layer where the object is, mask where the object is looking. A couple of quick tips. You can also edit layer names by right clicking on a square and clicking rename layer. And you can get to the full menu by clicking on this and going to edit layer names. This is the same as project, project settings, etc. I think that's about gonna do it for layers and masks. I promise you they sound more complicated than they are. If you're unsure, play around a little. You'll start to get a feel for it. The more you use it, the more natural it'll become. And if you have questions, leave a comment down below. Hop over to my Discord and ask the community. The Discord is linked in my bio. This project is built on top of the game template that I released in my last video. It's available for free for you to use. It includes things like scene management, uh, game saving, player preferences, window size. Actually, window sizing is coming in the next update. In any case, it's got a lot of the boilerplate stuff that you need to get your project up and running more quickly. Updates will come out mm, probably somewhat monthly. If that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss one of those updates. An early version is available on GitHub and Itch right now, and I will continue to push updates as new features are added. That is all for today. Good luck with your projects and thank you for watching.